All right, why don't we jump right into our first big topic for the day, and this is already causing big waves in the tech community. There's already a thread on the forum that is, so this was originally posted 12 hours ago by NK 1987. It's a good year, 1987. Not quite as good a year as the one before it, but decent, decent year. Um, and K1987 says that uh, Hardware Unbox asked the question specifically, and AMD seemed to have replied that all future AGISA code for Zen 3 will not support anything but 5XX series motherboards. Uh, this doesn't seem to be like in the past when vendors have added support for A320 boards but more like when AMD updated the AGISA to lock out PCI Express 4 on X470 boards. So there is a huge mixture of reaction all the way from people expressing their frustration to people defending AMD's position here. Uh, let's go ahead and give you guys sort of the very short version of the notes here. So Zen 3 is the upcoming AMD Ryzen 4000 series processors. That is the desktop ones. 4000 series processors on mobile are in fact Zen 2. Confused yet? I don't blame you. Uh, hey, look at that. We've got a compatibility matrix. Wow. Wonderful work, Luke. It's kind of cut off, but actually sort of maybe useful. Um, you know what? Yeah. Oh, wow. What if I do? Oh, that oh didn't wow. Make That's better. spectacular. What if I do that? uh, you know what? It's, it's great. You, you know what? You try hard and I love it. <laughs> so Zen 3. Zen 3 is AMD's upcoming architecture that we're going to find in their desktop 4000 series processors. And it sounds, at least from AMD's hints and teasing, like it is going to be a very significant upgrade. Like people are expecting this to be the one where they go from being really competitive with Intel CPU offerings but at very compelling prices and with a with a core count advantage where if you happen to um you know have a workload that takes advantage of more cores then it'll be more performant but if you're a raw gamer you're probably better off sticking with intel um we're going to go from that situation to that you know the feeling we're getting is amd leapfrogging intel in a significant way where across the board they are going to be the performance leader and so there's a lot of people out there with amd motherboards based on amd's um guidance so far and based on their attitude so far towards Oh, wow. I'm accidentally streaming at 60 FPS. Well, there you go. I had meant to set it to 30. Uh, based on Beautiful. AMD's attitude so far towards backwards and forwards compatibility between their motherboard chipsets and their CPUs, um, there's people out there that are sitting there with AMD motherboards like, yeah, I'm going to upgrade to I'm going to upgrade to Zen 3. I'm going Ryzen 4000 series. As soon as this thing drops, boom, you will not. So it looks like Zen 3 will only be supported on B550 and X560, or X570, excuse me, which means that unless you bought a new motherboard to go with your Zen, Zen 2 Ryzen 3000 series, so third gen um, processor, you are going to be plumb out of luck. The farthest you're going to be able to go is Ryzen third gen. Uh, people seem to be pretty annoyed, but in fairness to AMD, let's have a look at how long AM4 has been going strong. It yep. was announced in 2016, delivered in early 2017, and they are actually still releasing processors for this platform. And as long as your older motherboard did get a BIOS update from the manufacturer to support these new chips... There are people out there running very early boards with very new CPUs. And what's really cool about having that option is that it means that if you are not the kind of person who has a ton of money, all right, you bought a board back over three years ago, three and a half years ago, you bought a motherboard, you said, look, I'm betting on AMD. And you would have gotten, you know, what was uh, what was like a good chip back then? You know, maybe you picked yourself up a Ryzen, a Ryzen 1600. All right. So let's have a look at why am I in French by default here? All right. So the Ryzen 5 1600 processor. Here's the specifications. I'm going to pull this up. I can't show it to you guys, but whatever. It's got six cores. All right. Maximum boost frequency up to 3.6 gigahertz. It had like a decent... Um, Oh, wow. You've got, uh, there's two Linuses now. Thanks, Luke. Uh, okay. So that's, you know, decent boost frequency. You had decent IPC, base frequency 3.2, and it had 12 threads. Okay. That was, that was a great value. But Zen 2 is 
so much faster that if you were to run out and go on newegg.com and uh let's let's have a look ryzen 2600 for 168 dollars you could move to six cores of 3.4 gigahertz base 3.9 gigahertz boost much faster ipc like this is a way better processor for 168 bucks plus you can probably flip your 1600x okay so ebay.com here suckers let's have a look so Ryzen 1600 oh did I say sorry 1600 non non 1600 1600 non x okay so that thing is still worth looks like about a hundred bucks on eBay all right anywhere from 100 to 120 dollars so over a span of three and a half years you could have gone from what was pretty competitive back then to like cutting edge now for uh, the difference between these you know. 200 bucks or whatever that's looking pretty good to me for for a cpu upgrade path and this is gen like i know i know he's he's mentioned this a couple times but this has actually been a really long amount of time of compatibility and they have already held back certain features due to trying to keep this platform going for a longer period of time with uh, so the oh yeah go ahead sorry? go ahead go ahead no no hit me so the like super enthusiast should kind of want this to a certain degree anyways with that said, I want to play I want to play devil's advocate to myself here and okay. say um compared to what Intel does is AMD really out ahead by that much because that's Intel's uh that's Intel's game, right? So every every motherboard, every new motherboard chipset launches with a new CPU and then you get like one CPU upgrade. There was actually yeah. one case where we got uh, where we got two. It was the uh, what was it? Devil's Canyon refresh or something like that. So where uh, you had the 3770K, the 4770K and then the 4790K was like sort of a sort of an upgrade for it, but it realistically it was just like a tweaked 4770K. But if you kind of go and look back at it, okay, we got Zen, we got Zen Plus, which was a bigger tweak than Devil's Canyon for sure. And then we got Zen 2 on those motherboards. We only really got two full CPU refreshes. We got like two and a half kind of thing. And that is better than Intel. But if you look at their Threadripper platform, it was the same thing. Right, we got a new. We actually got a new socket with the third gen Threadripper. So they only managed to do two generations on that one, and then we actually. I don't know if we know if uh, TRX four or STRX four uh, socket TRX four is getting. I think. I think it is probably getting another generation. I don't know if that's actually formally confirmed. So don't take take all of this from for the ignorant ramblings that it is. But I think there's a couple of things we have to acknowledge here. One is kudos to AMD for making a good effort here because one difference is that even though they only managed two and a half hey they managed two and a half and through the work of their board partners updating their bioses there are people out there who really did get three and a half years worth of upgrades on a motherboard that's freaking awesome yep. number yep. two is that by keeping the same am4 socket even though the chipset compatibility is uh a little bit dicier they are creating a lot of confusion in their lineup, something that I have heard cited as a reason that Intel does not do this. They don't want confusion in the lineup. If you buy this and you buy this, it will work that simple. Um, so AMD has taken that risk. They have taken the risk of creating confusion in their lineup to have as good of intercompatibility as they possibly can. And what's neat is that instead of going, okay, I've got a CPU and a motherboard, and then in two years, they will both be complete dead-end platforms, at least if you were to upgrade. Let's say you bought your original motherboard back three and a half years ago, and you were to upgrade your motherboard today in preparation for Zen 3, right? You go get an X570 or a B550 board. Well, now you can have third gen, and then probably, maybe, something else after that. We've got this overlap between the motherboard and CPU compatibility so that at least if you buy two things, the odds of both of them becoming a dead end at the same time is lower. And as an upgrader, as someone who frequently over the years would, would upgrade my computer piecemeal, that's something that's very appealing to me. You know what? I've got a motherboard I already like. I've got a new CPU. You know what? I don't need a new CPU today. This is enough performance for me, but I want some new motherboard features that are super sexy. Go get a new motherboard. That's a pretty cool that's... way for an enthusiast to move their system forward. 
Do you think that's that common these days? No. And that's another one of the big reasons that um, Intel, uh, that I've heard off the record from, you know, citation needed sources at Intel. Uh, that's one of the big reasons that I've heard for them to not really pursue it as hard. So yeah. it creates a ton of confusion. It creates a ton of uh, customer angst. Like I experienced it for the first time personally. Uh, the the BIOS intercompatibility issues with AM4 motherboards that can arise and be very, very frustrating. Like um, I was building a system last week and I built the whole thing up. I water cooled it. Should have should have post tested it before I actually <laughs> water cooled it. But whatever, you know, you live and learn or you just live one way or the other. Or, yep. <laughs> OK, I boot the thing up and no post and there's no indication, right? It's not like it makes a special beep code when you install an incompatible CPU. It just like the power flicked on for a second and then off and then on and then off and then on. It looked like just kind of a standard uh, post fail, right? And I was like, fortunately, I am tech savvy enough and I have access to a warehouse full of CPUs 20 minutes away that I was able to go, oh, you know what? It's probably a BIOS compatibility issue. And I ran over to the warehouse, grabbed a Ryzen 1600 or 2600 or something like that, popped it in there. Yep, sure enough, it fires right up, flashed the BIOS, put my third gen uh, 3900X back in there and we're off to the races. But I can see why a company might shy away from that as a user experience, because a lot of your brand as a company is built on how people feel when they buy and use your product. And that was not a good user experience. That's the cold, hard truth of it. And I will confess, I did not fully and properly understand the problem with AMD's uh, BIOS intercompatibility problems. So I was using a B450 board with a Ryzen 3rd gen and my logic based on, you know, the 15 years or whatever I've been into this stuff was, hey, it's been so long since the B450 and Ryzen 3rd gen launches that they should be out of the box compatible by now. I don't have to worry about doing a BIOS update in order to run this chip. That is straight up not how it works. So part of the reason for them dropping the compatibility now and part of the reason that the compatibility is so messy is that the uh, the flash chips, so the, the ROM chips on these motherboards cannot hold enough data to have all the code that they need to be compatible with every CPU that could feasibly be plugged into it. And it's like, oh, yeah, that makes so much physical sense Physical limitations, now. yeah. These are physical limitations. So we've actually seen compromises be made. So the board that I was using was an ASRock board. You have to go on ASRock's website and it specifically says, download this version of the new BIOS if you're running one of these CPUs. Download this one if you're running these <laughs> CPUs. That's, that's, a, that's a bad user experience. I mean, I went, through the, I went through trying to get my grandparents set up with an iPad over the phone last weekend. And like, obviously that's a pretty extreme example. It took like four hours. Um, <laughs> Well, it's like little things like they didn't know their Wi-Fi password because why would they? They don't have any like Wi-Fi devices. Uh, and yeah, then okay. there were Telus. I was like, OK, we need to look at the Telus box. Well, they have two Telus boxes stacked on top of each other. So, you know, that was a stumbling block. Uh, mm. Their their iMac is so old that um, browser support has been dropped from almost every <laughs> major browser. There's some kind of Firefox clone. It's like uh, Ice Fox or something like that. Arctic Fox that will still run on it, but they didn't have that installed. So even accessing their routers, uh, even accessing their routers UI to log in as an admin, the login button was just not there. So I'm like, I'm like <laughs> telling my grandpa over the phone, I'm like, just click the login button. He's like, there's no login button. I'm like, no, I'm looking at like screenshots on, on Google of like where the login button is. You're, the, everything else about this page that you're describing to me is right. Click the login button. He's like, it's not there. <coughs> Random, random pro tip I would recommend, yeah. uh, it, and I've used this <sighs> when when trying to help my grandpa with something. Set is it up with Team Viewer before you send it to him. It, if you can get them to get Team Viewer going, which is <coughs> potentially a whole different issue. Yeah, I couldn't um, get them on so Wi-Fi. Th this is actually how I got them to the point of being able to get Team Viewer working. Yeah, uh, which is I could you can usually get them to engage in a video call. Um, I, mean, I didn't have get on Wi-Fi, so. But their phone, they didn't have. They a don't phone have a cell phone. Wi-Fi. Yeah, no, no, this was yeah, like. You're screwed. Yeah, I, I, I had to put on a mask and gloves and just go there. 
And the stupid thing is that once I got there, it legitimately wasn't simple because of the browser okay. yeah. compatibility issues. They had no yep. other web browser capable device in the building that was able to go in and reconfigure the password for their Wi-Fi that they had um, that they had forgotten. So it's like, okay, great. And the UI for that TELUS combination Wi-Fi modem router thing <clears throat> is so bad. So when you change something and like change something else, then click save, the first thing you change doesn't change. It apparently you just have to do one field at a time, at least in Arctic Fox, which is what I was using, right? So we're using Water Fox. Uh, no, Arctic Fox. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's like specifically for old iMacs or something. Fox. Wow. Yeah, cool. I know, right? Um, anyway, what were what were we talking about? What were we talking about? I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, great. Right. It's a bad user experience. So obviously that's a bit of an extreme example, but not everyone is me. And if I am frustrated by the out of the box experience, I guarantee you the average, like me, when I was, you know, 15 years old, buying my first computer, realizing that I have to go, what, like find a friend. I didn't have any friends. Go find a friend who has a, a CPU that's compatible with my motherboard, convince them to let me rip the CPU out of their computer and put it in there or, or like hope that the store has a has a p fast and convenient it, policy service center. yeah right yeah and now I have to like go and pay for that or or not I know some places do it for free it's just it's just not a great user experience so I I, I see it from both sides I see the AMD community feeling a little betrayed but I also see AMD making an earnest effort to maintain this compatibility even to the detriment of their user experience and I see why they might want to clean this up moving forward that's my take yeah yeah I I, I guess I understand that I think I'm definitely not more on the side of the AMD community feeling betrayed because like if they kept this going it would just get worse and worse Yes. And like, I don't, that's not, yep. that's not a good solution. Yeah. And you're, I think you're like a lot of people where by the time you upgrade your CPU, a, it's probably time to upgrade. Like when you upgrade yeah. your system, you're rocking a 5960X, if I recall correctly. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, it's, you know, eight cores of a Haswell ain't that fast these days, not at those clock speeds. <laughs> Um, by the time you're upgrading your CPU, you know what? Hey, you might also want some new high speed. Actually, you might want some new higher bandwidth USB ports. Yeah. Yeah. So we had an issue sure. right before the call. Why don't you explain what happened? I, uh, I, I've been plugging it. So I, I use a camcorder for this now cause yay upgrades. Uh, and I've been plugging my AVIO 4k capture card into the same USB plug every time. And it's been yep. working every time, but I changed how I had my VR setup done and I moved where it was plugged in via USB. So that controller had more bandwidth going through it. So the camera would just like stop working constantly. Yep. Very took me a while to out that I just needed to plug it in somewhere else and it solved all the problems immediately. Yep. Um, so yeah, no, that would be great. I, I'm probably waiting for... Ryzen 3rd Gen next... to be cheap in the Linus, Linus Media Group store. Yeah. After fourth gen comes out, that's what I would expect you to do. Pretty much. Yeah, you're probably gonna go. You're yeah. probably gonna go 3900x. You know, like not full baller tier because I don't think you need 16 cores. No. Nope. You don't want to pay an extra like you know 300 dollars for that or whatever. Yeah. See, I'm nope. on to you. I, I know what you're about. Yeah. 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 What do you think I'm planning on graphics side? Oh, graphics side. Well, you're definitely not going SLI again. I know that for a fact. Not a chance. That has been such a bad experience for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know what? I think the timing is going to be really good for like I, the, the rumors are already starting to swirl around a, an upcoming RTX refresh. Yep. I think that NVIDIA is very unlikely to make dramatic changes to the NVENC encoder, which I think is the only reason that you could be persuaded to go RTX 3000 <laughs> series. So my guess is you're going to try and sweet talk me into a 2080 Ti for a song <laughs> right when RTX 3000 series launches. That's that's your move. That's got to be He nailed move. it. Literally every part of the plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That was it. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited for, for upgrading to the new NVENC encoding stuff on the 2000 series. And yep. RTX voice looks awesome. Yeah. And that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I, I know. I know. <laughs> I know, Luke.